Good morning and welcome to radio and television networks and online platforms across Australia. Thank you for joining the official New South Wales Anzac Day service. I'd like to begin today's service by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we're standing on, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I'm Gareth McRae, your host for today's Anzac Day service, which is being broadcast live from the Anzac Memorial in Sydney. I acknowledge Her Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales, the Premier of New South Wales and the Acting President of the RSL New South Wales who are leading this commemoration. Due to the global outbreak of COVID-19 and the need to ensure the safety of the veteran community and general public, traditional Anzac Day services throughout New South Wales and Australia are not being held today. RSL New South Wales and the New South Wales Government have joined forces to bring you this special service which acknowledges the sacrifices and efforts made by our veterans and current servicemen and women whilst keeping everybody safe and adhering to health guidelines. We are practicing social distancing across the Anzac Memorial by separating those in attendance across the Hall of Memory, the Hall of Service and the Hall of Silence and by using the Cenotaph at Martin Place. This commemoration is being broadcast on television and online. We invite you, wherever you may be, to take part in this Anzac Day Act of Remembrance, as you would at any Anzac Day event you would attend live. On this Anzac Day 2020, we find ourselves facing a long and difficult road ahead, but comfort can be found in the knowledge that our determination will once again prevail to lead us into more prosperous times, just as it has done for many past generations. Not even COVID-19 can steal that from us. We're broadcasting today from the two most significant war memorials in this state. The Anzac Memorial in Hyde Park, Sydney, the state's principal war memorial, opened in 1934 and is dedicated to all Australians who have served in the Defence Force. We will also cross shortly to the Cenotaph in Maiton Place, which was dedicated in 1927 and is usually home, of course, to the annual Anzac Day dawn service. The order of service for this morning will follow the order of a traditional Anzac Day commemoration and I encourage you to join us at home in this special act of remembrance so together we can honour our Anzacs on this day. 105 years ago today, the Anzacs landed at Gallipoli. To commence this service of remembrance, we will hear a poem written by a soldier who was there, Leon Gellert, who served as a private in the 10th Battalion Australian Imperial Force. He was wounded at Gallipoli and evacuated to Malta and London, where he wrote this poem, The Last to Leave. It was written to mark the evacuation from the peninsula in 1915. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Gladys Berejiklian, Premier of New South Wales, to deliver the poem live from the Cenotaph in Martin Place. The Last to Leave by Leon Gallet. The guns were silent and the silent hills had bowed their grasses to a gentle breeze gazed upon the veils and the rills and whispered, what of these and what of these? These long forgotten dead with sunken graves, some crossless with unwritten memories. Their only mourners are the moaning waves. Their only minstrels are the singing trees. And thus I mused and sorrowed wistfully. I watched the place where they had scaled the height, the height whereupon they bled so bitterly throughout each day and through each blistered night. I sat there long and listened, all things listened to. I heard the epics of a thousand trees, a thousand waves I heard, and then I knew. Waves were very old, the trees were old, the trees were wise. The dead would be remembered evermore, the valiant dead that gazed upon the skies and slept in great battalions by the shore, lest we forget. Thank you, Premier. 
We now go to the Hall of Memory, where I invite Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales, to deliver her Anzac Day address. I am honoured to represent the people of New South Wales on this National Day of Remembrance and to acknowledge the veterans, families and communities around the state who are marking Anzac Day 2020. The Anzac Memorial, where this ceremony is being held, stands on Gadigal land. Known today as Hyde Park South, this land was traditionally a ritual contest ground and a crossroads for the walking trails of the Indigenous people. It was also an important ceremonial site, and so it remains today. I pay my respects to the Gadigal of the Eora Nation and to the traditional owners of all Aboriginal nations, extending to the furthest reaches of our state. There is a quietness here in the Hall of Memory this morning the marble floor is cool. The sculpted warrior, Sacrifice, is cradled, as always, by his mother, sister, wife and child, a joint bearing of the burden of war. The flame burns in homage to all those who have lost their lives in service to our country. In the Hall of Service are soils from 1,701 New South Wales towns, cities, suburbs and homesteads, given as the home address by our first World War enlistees. And the 120,000 stars in the domed ceiling of this Hall of Memory honour those who embarked overseas. At the entrance threshold to the Hall of Silence, the words, let silent contemplation be your offering are inlaid in brass in the black slate. Only silence can remind us of the sacredness of life. And all these are reminders of what has been endured and tell us why the ravages of war should never be endured. They are a statement as to why service is not about war, but is about peace. These symbols tell the stories of the dedication and determination of all who serve, stories that are immortalised in the Anzac spirit, a spirit of courage, mateship, endurance, humour and ingenuity. In the months after the end of World War I, as soldiers, sailors and nurses were returning home, the world succumbed to another enemy, the Spanish flu which wreaked its havoc on our already grieving community and constrained our first post-war Anzac commemorations. Today's COVID-19 pandemic has likewise imposed its constraints and for good reason. War or no war, a pandemic is an enemy. And just as in war, the physical and mental health of our people is at the forefront of our concerns, in 2020, we again each need to take care of our own health and to look out for the well-being of others. Health and community always go together. Buoyed by the Anzac spirit, the community's commitment to the greater good in accepting the constraints on our movement and the limitations on our activities calls for commendation. This strong community spirit speaks to our Australian character. Let us always be like that. Let us all continue to be compassionate and generous and grateful to those who are working to keep us healthy and safe, including our Defence Service personnel. Today, I especially thank our veterans, our war widows, our current serving personnel and their families, for whom today is one of the most important in their year. And I pay tribute to our World War II veterans as we mark this year the 75th anniversary of the end of that war. I also acknowledge the many people and organisations who would normally join with us in person 
to commemorate this day, including our ex-service organisations, Legacy, our Commonwealth and other allies. And let us not forget those against whom we fought. The decision to restrict the way in which this Anzac Day is to be commemorated was not taken lightly. It is the day when the community honours our veterans, the day when mateships are renewed, the day when courage is remembered, the day when we reflect on what was endured. In the quietness of this place and in the quietness of the places where you are, let us make this a special reflective Anzac Day and let us look forward to the warm handshakes, the proud countenances and the camaraderie which we will enjoy again. Today, we remain united in the Anzac spirit. The connection and the commemoration is different, but howsoever different, let us remember them lest we forget. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now I invite everyone at home to stand for the act of remembrance. Flowers have traditionally been laid on graves or memorials to commemorate the dead. Laying a wreath of flowers is a way to show respect and an integral part of many commemorative ceremonies. Today, a single floral tribute will be placed at the Flame of Remembrance by Her Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales, on behalf of all the people of New South Wales. Thank you, Your Excellency. Please remain standing as we will now hear the Ode to the Fallen. The ode used is the third and fourth stanza from the poem For the Fallen by Lawrence Binion and was written in the early days of World War I. At the end of the ode, we invite you to repeat the words, we will remember them and lest we forget. After the ode, the last post will be sounded, followed by one minute of reflective silence. At the conclusion of the minute's silence, the Ravalli will be sounded. The last post is sounded at military funerals and commemorative services to indicate that having completed a life's work, a soldier is now at rest. The silence is broken by the Ravalli, which comes from the French word meaning to wake up. It is sounded at commemorative services to signal the rising of spirits for another day. The last post and revalli will be played by bugler Abel Seaman Rachel Burns of the Royal Australian Navy Band Sydney, who will play from the western vestibule of the Hall of Silence. The Ode to the Fallen will now be offered by Acting President of the RSL New South Wales Branch, Mr Ray James. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget.
We come to the final part of today's service, the singing of the national anthems. The anthems will be performed by able seaman Lee Robkey, vocalist from the Royal Australian Navy Band Sydney in the Hall of Service. The New Zealand national anthem, sung in Maori and English, is a fitting part of most Anzac Day services in Australia. It recognises the contribution of New Zealand in the birth of the Anzac legend. It will be followed by the Australian national anthem. I invite everyone at home to remain standing and join our vocalist in the singing of the national anthems. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil. Our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing, advance Australia fair. Beneath our radiant southern cross, we'll toil with hearts and hands. To make this common wealth of ours renowned of all the lands. For those who've come across the seas, we've boundless plains to share. With courage, let us all combine to advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing, advance Australia fair. That concludes our special New South Wales Anzac Day service for 2020. I would like to thank the network of television and radio stations and online platforms for helping us to commemorate together, even while apart, so we can continue to remember those who served and sacrificed. RSL New South Wales would like to thank Her Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales, the Premier of New South Wales and Department of Premier and Cabinet, the Trustees of the Anzac Memorial, New South Wales Office for Veterans Affairs, the Australian Defence Force and the Royal Australian Navy Band Sydney. During these challenging times ahead, let us be inspired by the spirit of the Anzacs 
whose distinctive qualities of courage, mateship, endurance, humour and ingenuity will get us through. Farewell and thank you again for joining us today. We wish you all a safe Anzac Day and year ahead.